Thank you Yay. so much for being here to uh, chat with us about, about your class and you sure. and so everybody can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. So do you, do you prefer Sandy or Sandra? Well, that's a tricky question. <laughs> I, I am more than happy with either, uh, but all my published works are under Sandra just to kind of make it easier to find everything. So understood. E my... Either way is fine. Tell, so you're going to be teaching a class with Wordcrafters um, called, uh, completely forgot the name of it, something about the body in motion, writing the body in writing motion. Writing creatively about the body in motion. That's quite a long title. I... It's a lovely title. But yeah. <laughs> Tell us a bit, a bit about the class and what students can expect to learn in this class. Well, I mean, I think this really... I think it's a bit of a tr tricky subject because people can feel very excluded from it almost right away. Like, oh, that's not for me because I don't like to exercise or I'm not an athlete or, or I don't like sports. But really, I want this class to feel as inclusive as possible. Um, I'm a person just I'm a person who lives with chronic pain. I really was never an athlete. I'm a sports fan, but I've never really been competitive athletically. So for me, you know, I do write a lot about this topic, but I don't fit into any of those typical categories. So I don't want somebody to feel like they can't, they can't show up. Um, I think we'll really be trying to talk about not just the glory of the body, but also, you know, the struggles of having a body um, and, and talking about sort of, you know, capturing those moments and talking about them in ways that are not necessarily the typical ways we think of, like journalistically, you know, the way that sports is covered, or, you know, we're probably not going to really be looking at super sentimental um, writing about sports or the body, like think movies like Rudy, we're probably not rewriting Rudy, <laughs> Rudy or the blind side, you know, but what we're going to talk about is sort of how do you how do you take an obsession like this? I think there are similar workshops on pop culture or whatever, something that you're interested in and really make this a serious creative writing topic, like something that you can actually write a book about and, and think of it as as a as a piece of of creative writing rather than just journalism or a hobby or whatever so but I think it's really open to open to anyone you know whether you are just talking about this stuff for the first time or a very new writer um or you are a writer who you know has published several books on other things or even has already written about sports or the body or you know yoga or, or maybe you're just someone who's interested in those sorts of things maybe you're you know not to stereotype but a, a soccer mom or someone who's been playing a sport your entire life and wants to to kind of articulate that in a new way. It's really a wide range of folks and genres. I happen to mostly identify as a poet, but I've published fiction and lots of essays. Um, so whatever you come in with, the exercises that I will give you and the things we'll sort of be doing in the class will really um, work for any genre. I think there's really a thought in my other writing as well, you know, not all of my writing is about sports or exercise or whatever, but, um, you know, I, I'm very big on any sort of image in creative writing, not just being a visual experience, but being a sensory experience on all five levels and athletics or exercise or even just someone writing about their chronic pain experience can really um, fulfill that goal of seriously sensory writing it's a great even if you don't think you will be writing more about any of those topics if you're trying to develop that sensory experience in any sort of writing I think this would be a great class for you because a lot of the exercises and things that we'll look at will um will look to hone those skills that, that makes total sense so why do you like teaching um around about whether it's sports writing or embodied writing or yeah um, well I think for me actually a lot of my writing about sports um has come from the sense of awe 
that it can inspire when you're watching or participating as a fan, because that is a part, that is a type of participation. Um, and the sensory experiences that go on physically, mentally, emotionally in the fan, the fans experience. So I think for me, awe has always been something that I've written a lot about, whether it's um, writing that's more about the natural world or relationships that we have with other human beings or some sort of spiritual force. And sports is kind of an easy tap in metaphor to kind of get at all of those things. Um, and I don't necessarily think that your typical creative writing student or whatever thinks about it that way you know a lot of a lot of creative writers are like sports ball is stupid um but you know I guess I've sort of found in the last I don't know decade now of writing a book of poems about uh, baseball that two audiences have really emerged for me and one is the sports fan who is an audience that really hasn't been tapped into it's some by literary fiction but very little by poetry and um there they will approach me all the time and say you know I haven't read um a book since high school but I bought your book um and that's really fulfilling and then also um my fellow writers who will come up to me and say like I really don't like the subject matter at all but I really like the sounds that you're using in this book or really like the way the book is organized or the poems are just good, even though they're about baseball, which I don't like. So I think, you know, if you're looking to develop your audience, this is actually a really great way to do so. I developed a much bigger audience by actually publishing on these subjects. And, and I think that there are folks out there that feel like I even look at like somebody like Marianne Moore or you know, Annie Dillard, people who were clearly very big sports fans, but never really wrote about it because they didn't feel like it, that writing would be taken seriously. And a class like this helps to, I think, dispel that myth a little bit. And I'm all for that. So. I love that. Well, no matter what you're writing, you got humans in them and they have bodies and those bodies yeah. are going to be moving and doing things. And so even just understanding how to write about all of those various sensations using all of the senses seems like it would be yeah. a useful thing, regardless of whether there are fight scenes or sports happening or, you know, yeah, a or marathon. a love scene or someone breaking their arm. Like there's a lot of useful. I think there's a lot of useful applications. Um, yeah. to this sort of work yeah so tell me a bit about your teaching style and philosophy like your values and beliefs around teaching yeah so I would say you know I really come to a class like this really hoping that folks are at all different levels and that are they're willing to teach and learn from each other um I I guess what I like to do is try to get everyone involved. I will typically ask folks to bring works in progress. So, you know, if they have something and it could maybe not even be on the topic, but I like to at least get them some help with a couple different pieces. First, generating a piece um, and then also working on something in progress. So they leave with at least a couple of pieces that have, you know, grown in this process. Um, I think it's really not worth the money for folks unless they're getting something tangible out of the experience with me. So I want to leave them with um, a good list, good curated list of places to submit where there are editors that I know, and I can even give those editors a heads up and say, Hey, you know, I just taught a class on this and you might have some submissions coming your way um, about X, Y, and Z. So they'll get that curated list from me and that little bump recommendation of submitting if they show up. Um, and I think also just try to introduce folks to some different types of writing that's already published about um, these topics, which, you know, I think we're all kind of very familiar with um, Casey at the bat. You know, we're not going to be looking at that. Um, you know, we're going to be looking at some really diverse uh, voices in some all different genres, some short little bits. Um, either, for, and they're pretty much all contemporary writers. Some are, 
folks that you may never have heard of and I'll be able to introduce you to them, which will be a lot of fun. And then there are folks that I think we all know a little bit about. And, um, you know, again, not worried too much about genre here because that's not really my, I think this is, we're going to kind of look at some prose and some poetry, but my focus as a teacher is always on, especially with a topic like this, I think even something unpleasant, even if you're writing about something unpleasant, really, if we're talking about awe and we're talking about sensory experiences, the focus should be on pleasure. So I'm not going to be, we're not going to be doing some hardcore literary dissection. We're more going to be looking at like, what gives you pleasure? What do you enjoy reading? What is evoking a response in you? And kind of taking it from there. Cool. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So tell me a bit about like how did you become a teacher? Like kind of why or how or what was that path for you into teaching? Yeah. So for me, I um I did an MFA in creative writing at George Mason University and finished that in 2010. Boy, it's been a long time. Um, but um and I taught some creative writing while I was there. Um, and then I taught um at universities and uh, colleges, maybe for about 10 years after that, some full-time, some part-time. Um, and now actually, I my day job is I manage a tutoring center at a community college, which is um, great. Um, and I think it reflects sort of my teaching journey in a way because I get to manage tutors who know about just about everything, you know, whether it's anatomy or it's automotive technology or cosmetology or it's English, you know, like, and it's great to be around that sort of knowledge. It's, you feel kind of like you're in an incubator and you're getting three more master's degrees when you observe them and like, you know, work with their students and things like that. So, you know, that's part of why I love the education space, because I really think we should all be able to come to it and and glean something and something like this is just so much it's so much better frankly than when I used to teach in the classroom and giving out grades and you know having to measure progress because this is really a thing where you can you can get out of it what you put into it you know if you're a beginner and you just kind of want to feel it out and write a little bit and have fun with it that's fine and if you are more serious and you really want to you know find some places to submit and find some mentoring um, with some really specific, you know, details of how to, about how to try to get published in this space. I think we can do that too. Um, so I'm not sure if I totally answered the question, but. But it, sound, it sounds like you got into teaching originally when you're doing your MFA program and you've kind of continued it from there in one way or another. And now you are in charge of a whole group of, of teachers, of other people, which honestly sounds excellent as a writer. Cause I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> you would know who you have like the resources for like if you ever need to do any book research or like know about true. some specific thing you yeah. can be like yeah. tell me about chemistry and how mm -hmm. this certain yeah. thing would work <laughs> or like that, I think that's it would fun. be I think but, it would be yeah. even better if I was a novelist but yeah no yeah. that's true I know and I've learned all about the chambers of the heart or the different types of hepatitis you know and it, you yeah. know as a lifelong learner that's always fun to be in a classroom and just kind of watching somebody else um try working with students and you know and they're all they're all peer tutors they're all college students so you're kind nice. of getting to see them on their first little jobs and going that's out beautiful. there being their mentor yeah it's oh, very that's sweet lovely. that's yeah. lovely because you're helping yeah. like you're not raised but you're, you're helping you're mentoring the next generation oh it feels like it feels like i'm raising the cabbage patch <laughs> yes <laughs> i mean they're, if they're in college they're still mm. you know oh yeah so um what's been one of your most successful teaching experiences yeah well I think for me I've given this answer before on like job interviews and um everybody thinks it's boring but I'm gonna give it again because really this is like the most fulfilling thing that can happen is you know I've been in a room with students and I've said okay I'm gonna read this poem out loud and instead of trying to struggle like I had a professor a long time ago who said to me, you know, humans are meaning making animals. 
Um, and we are, we just want to figure out what something means all the time. But um, I just, you know, it was an, I think it was an Elizabeth Bishop poem. I think it was at the fish houses, which is one of my absolute favorite poems of all time. And I was like, well, look, we're just gonna, I'm gonna read this out loud slowly. And I really want you to try not to think about what it could possibly mean. Think about what you're hearing, what you're smelling, what you're seeing. Um, the colors, you know, and I don't even know if I told them all of this beforehand, but I just said, try to zone out and just listen. And then I asked them, you know, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? And they had so many good responses. I mean, you couldn't stop them from talking. You know, I see silver. I, I smell fish. You know, I'm feeling the really cold water burning my skin, you know, all the things in that poem. And these are 18 year olds and these were kids in the class, you know, they, I think this was not necessarily a class they wanted to take. Um, and that I found is really the way to get somebody talking about, you know, poetry um, <laughs> when they don't necessarily want to or don't like it. it. A lot of it is freeing them up from the burden of all the expectations of before. Um, and sometimes it's not that easy to do. But I think the same thing in this case, like, with a class like this, I really, that's why I keep sort of mentioning, I don't want anybody to feel excluded or their version or definition of what the body in motion means. It might actually even be just the body staying still, you know, like that could be part of this, you know, like just that feeling of, you know, I, I have a family member who has fibromyalgia and there were years where she couldn't get out of bed. I think that would actually be a great topic to explore in a class like this, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I think all comers and just sort of realizing that there, there's something valuable in your experience. That's, that's a lovely successful teaching experience story. <laughs> Honestly, getting like that gave me a little, little goosebumps. I was like, that's not Aww. boring. That's, a, that's lovely. Yeah. I'm sure, glad to hear like, that. So what kinds of things are you interested in or passionate about that may or may not be in, in connected at all to the class or writing just about you? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sort of an amateur cartoonist. I really like to draw little cartoons and they're not good. Um, but <laughs> I wish I had one right here. I could say my favorite pastime is drawing little cartoons of my husband doing things like washing his face in the sink or sleeping on the couch. Um, and he's sort of a short guy with a little belly. So he is perfect for cartoons, you know? <laughs> so, um, that's something I've just enjoyed. I find joy in, you know, I, I love to swim. So it's not the sport that I've written the most about, but I am actually working on a, like a little bit of a, right now I'm working on a braided essay about um, Katie Ledecky, the swimmer, my swimming, chronic pain, and maybe a few other things. So I love to swim. Um, I feel just really free out there. It's when my body feels the best. Um, what else? I really like old TV shows, you know, classic TV. Um, I, my husband tries to pull me in to watch normal TV shows, you know, but I, <laughs> new TV shows, but, but I, I really enjoy old classics. So I like, I like shows like the Rockford Files or Cheers or <laughs> I think they're just sort of comforting. So cool. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I have one last question for you. And at Wildcrafters, this is the most important question. Okay. What is your favorite kind of chocolate? Oh, okay. That's a good question. And I feel like I'm not going to have a satisfactory answer for you. I, oh God, how do I lead into this? I don't really like chocolate very much I know I know I know I know I know it's sick it's wrong it's not even human actually uh I do if I am gonna have chocolate I ha I would like dark chocolate maybe like 70 percent dark not too much darker than that um and I will have that occasionally and I think sometimes that can be really good um, but I just don't eat it a lot. I'm more of a, I'm such a philistine. I really like gummy candy um, or fruit-based candy. So. 
All right, that's okay. It's it's not it's not a trick question. Um, okay. And really, like as much so, at Wild Crafters, our our pillars are community, craft, inspiration, and chocolate. And oh, so, because you know, chocolate, you know, can help help with yeah. all those other things. Yeah, and sure. We 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 are an include. We don't just say we're inclusive. We are an inclusive place, and that includes people who don't really like chocolate very much. Okay. We accept everybody. I feel good about that. And in, like, want to include, you know all the people, all the writers and the storytellers. So regardless of your chocolate love or lack thereof, it's okay. We accept you. We accept you for who you are. The rest of my family loves chocolate obsessively. My husband, my mother, my mother-in-law. So they're, hopefully they're covering up for my wound somewhere, but, (laughs) but I'll eat it. I mean, yeah, if you put some like salted caramel covered in dark chocolate, Mm. in front of me I'm gonna eat that you know or some sort of raspberry truffle I'll eat that you know right. so. so you don't abhor it it's just not like you're no it's just not my go-to yeah that's fine yes yeah that's fine I I hear you personally I hear you <laughs> but all right well thank you so much for spending some time with us today telling us more about you and your class what people can expect what kind of teacher you are um it, it sounds lovely so thank you appreciate yeah, it no problem